I'm here with artist Yildiz Gradowski. Did I say that correctly? Yes, Yildiz. Uh, excellent. Yes. Uh, who is an artist out of Lowell, and we are very excited to be displaying her artwork here at Somerville Media Center. Um, so we're actually going to talk about some of your art and some of your techniques and how you became an artist. Um, so welcome, Yildiz. Thank you. Um, so why don't we start with that? How, how did you become an artist? What got you into making art? I've been in a family uh, that uh, always cherished art. Um, my mom, I, when she was young, I believe, um, in her teens, actually, she started painting uh, wooden spoons, folkloric designs, nature. And her uncle, my great uncle, uh, my maternal grandmother's brother was a musician, I'm told. I met him only a few times when I was very little. And, uh, but the family did not want him back then to become a professional musician, as artist dilemma always <laughs> never changes. Um, so he became only amateur musician. He was playing the tambourine, and he was very good. And um, I have an older sister who's an artist. I have a niece who's an artist. The other one is a doctor, but one is a painter. Uh, I don't even know, actually, if I found art or art found me. It's mm -hmm. like egg or chicken. I don't know which one came first. Uh, I was meant, I want to say destined, maybe, to become an artist. I always like to create things. Doesn't matter what I do. I, it has to be something creative. I guess it was very natural. I can tell you about my background. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, my name, Yildiz, means star in Turkish. Oh. But don't call me star, it's Yildiz. Yildiz. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, I was born and raised in Istanbul, Turkey. I went to um, State Academy of Fine Arts in Istanbul. Uh, later it became Mimar Sinan University, the greatest architect of, from centuries ago, from 15th century. And that's where I got my BFA and MFA. Then right after the graduation, I came to Boston. Uh, I went to BAU for another master's. And I went back home, but soon after I returned and I stayed. I've been here in this area for a long time. I moved a little bit south of Boston. I live Cambridge, Boston, north of Boston. Then I'm back where I was before. I'm in Somerville. For the last four years, I've been living in Somerville. I do have a studio at home, mm -hmm. uh, but I have a second one. The one you mentioned in Lowell is my second uh, studio at uh, Western Avenue mm -hmm. Studios, which is a great artist community. Over 300 artists uh, reside there. There are a lot of studio spaces, but that's the one uh, spoke the most to me. So that's Yeah, I, I hear Lowell is flourishing. Very right much, so very much. I, I didn't know much about Lowell. I'm learning and I'm becoming very, very interested. Very nice. And so how does the, uh, how does the Boston area uh, influence your artwork? It's not only just Boston. I actually, I find myself quite uh, uh, lucky being exposed to two different culture. Mm -hmm. And I see more commonality than differences actually in both cultures. So I combine in my art, I used to do uh, work with clay. I used to sculpt with clay. Um, always combine the two culture. Uh, either in the feelings or sometimes visually. Um, Boston by itself does not influence me, I guess. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's broader than Boston, I feel. More uh, universal uh, themes. More, more, yeah. Yes, more, yeah. Gender-related universal themes lately mm -hmm. becoming polit politics. I, don't want, I never want to involve, but it's almost impossible not mm. to. So. <laughs> Now, uh, let's talk about this painting that we have here um, in front of us. I, I know you uh, mentioned uh, some of the techniques. Mm -hmm. uh, this looks to me like a watercolor, or is it gouache? Yes, uh, it's it watercolor. Watercolor? Yes. yes. Um, and so maybe if you could Can talk... Can I just tell you oh, actually certainly. how I started this? When you say watercolor, uh, I do work in watercolor and acrylic. Mm -hmm. But the way it started, um, I was doing, again, um, working with clay, mm -hmm. uh, sculpting. And when I decided, that was more than a decade, uh, 
when I decided to downsize, I knew that I couldn't do work with clay. The way I work, I had a huge studio, the size of my apartment now, mm -hmm. it was my studio. And also, I don't want to rent a space, even if you get up three o'clock in the morning with something inspired, you, you go and then start working. Yeah. So I decided that's the end of my clay um, sculpting. So I thought, and then I'll go back to painting. Maybe a little corner of the living room, I said. Then I said, oh, maybe a little bigger corner. Maybe the hallway. Maybe the smallest bedroom. Now it's the biggest bedroom. But <laughs> then I started oozing out of the studio. That's why I have the second studio. The way I started, uh, I always like watercolor. And I thought watercolor was also easy. I said, maybe now I pick up the easy one. Mm -hmm. Turn out to be it's the hardest medium as far as painting. But I like the fluidity of watercolor mm -hmm. uh, and the freedom almost in it, if you can do it the right way. So I started with watercolor, but I wasn't satisfied. I didn't like it. I didn't like the, not the watercolor, but the painting. The coming from three dimension to two dimension did not satisfy me. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a very good instructor who became a friend. Uh, she was very generous in her offering, I guess, and also very intuitive. She told me that I was a very intuitive artist, so she gave me a list of other artists to check online and see if I like to take classes or workshops with them, and I found one. I drove to Virginia for a three-day workshop, and then I realized everybody was there, like they've been painting more than 20 years or so, but I just, mm -hmm they dive into it and it was fine and that instructor inspired me very much and he showed me the things that I could do the possibilities so I stayed I gave myself one year at the beginning and it didn't have to be that far um, I love it I do love it I st and he also introduced me into acrylic mm -hmm. at the time that I could use it's water-based yeah. uh, media anyway medium and um, you can use it as watercolor also mm -hmm. but by now I do work with both and acrylic is taking more than watercolor my most of my work now is in acrylic and I like to try different techniques some of the pieces I brought just to show the techniques they don't almost relate to each other but it's because they've been different techniques I tried on them yeah um, this one is watercolor um, and it's pure hundred percent watercolor there's no gouache or acrylic even any mixed media, any pencil work in mm -hmm. it. This is, um, the technique here was uh, the use of brush. I was using flat brush. That was almost the first time, 100% flat brush and uh, very angular shapes. Mm -hmm. um, it's called, I have another one very similar, but it's much cooler colors. The other one is called Arctic Cool and this is Arctic Heat. This is some, just a regular, uh, this is, um, acrylic mm -hmm. on a stretch canvas. The other one was on paper, wa watercolor paper. It's a very plain uh, method of painting, really. There's nothing special. It's just the playing of colors, the different colors, complementary colors mostly, mm -hmm. purples and yellows and orange and blues. And yeah, it's a different color scheme entirely exactly. than the other very one. Very free flowing mm -hmm. uh, with little uh, uh, pencil, uh, charcoal, white charcoal uh, introduced in it, and that's it. That's called Lava Lake. Lava Lake. Yes. And so do all, do, do, does all of your work refer to um, landscapes in no. some way? No, no, not exactly. Actually, less and less. Mm -hmm. it, maybe it was more. This is a study, this was a study uh, of this very different kind of technique. Uh, it's inspired by a German-American painter, Lionel Fianagon, mm -hmm. um, who died in New York, I believe, in 1950s, 56 or 57. This was, he didn't start painting this way, actually. Uh, towards the end, the second part of his painting period, he started painting a uh, different subject. It was mostly a lot of churches mm -hmm. in his paintings, but the style, this, this vertical lines on that diagonally cut and then overlap, lapping colors. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. It's very difficult in, um, in watercolor. When you overlap, they can become very muddy. You don't know. Oh, you should know maybe, but sometimes a lot of surprises when you overlap them. Yeah. Uh, whatever comes uh, at the end. But um, came out good. 
I like it a lot. It's yeah, called I, Providence. Providence. I love the way that it um, it reminds me of light and shadow. Yeah. The way light plays with architecture and, yes. and that you see through windows a lot, mm. and especially at certain times of the day, towards the end of the day and towards the beginning of the day where the angles are very sharp. Exactly, um, exactly. So, uh, that's that's what this reminds me of. It's beginning really of the day, ending of the day yeah. are the best time to photograph and to paint. Actually, with light, oh. if light is important, yeah, those are the best. Not the middle of the day, of course. This is called Better Striped. Um, I was at a workshop, um, and I made a, an acrylic painting that I wasn't very fond of. So I cropped it; it became square. I. When I came home, I still didn't like it, but the part that I did, the smaller part that I wasn't going to use, that I, not the cropped one, I cut it into vertical strips, and I attached them in such, paste them mm -hmm. over the main one square in certain ways, not the whole painting, and came out so good, I really loved it. <laughs> and this someone, some instructor was talking about, she really liked it too. I said, oh, maybe I can do another one. And this is, was a view, that uh, the f picture that I'd taken from my Istanbul uh, apartment. Uh, so I, what you do, I made two separate paintings. It's not 100% identical, mm -hmm. but close enough. Both uh, color, hues, and uh, subject matter. Mm -hmm. Then one of them I cut into stripes and pasted over. So that was the only technique which I really enjoyed when I was doing, I love it. I really liked and I made some really nice pieces, but I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like it, but uh, I, I guess that's it. I really like the movement in the piece, like the, yeah. the, the cutting into the, the vertical stripes. Mm -hmm. um, it suggests movement. Yes. And um, I, I really like uh, how, as you say, it's, they're very similar in theme, in color scheme. And, and out of these two works, um, you created this, this third work. <laughs> exactly. yeah, it's a lot of work, actually. It's a lot of work, yeah, um, and with a lot of movement. Yes. This one is, the, it happened so quickly. It's, I almost feel guilty how quickly this came up. Uh, I never used this kind of hot pink, but I had something left over. I just wanted to add, because this kind of color, this pink is added at the very end. It complements, uh, doesn't fight, but complements that cold blue so well, this warm blue. Uh, but this little figure here, this wasn't worked out. It just happened. I liked it so much. That's, I called it dance me blue, dance me pink, not blue, <laughs> pink. Uh, but I just wanted to show this piece just because of the easiness. Sometimes you spend so much time on a piece, but mm. sometimes it happens. I have a piece like that in, in a gallery in Agankuit, um, and they tell me it gets the most reaction from people. It's not the way I, it's a landscape, really. It's called Serenity, and truly, the way I made that piece was at the end of the a day, whatever I did, I had so much paint left on my palette. I didn't want to waste. I'm so cheap. I didn't <laughs> want to waste paint. This you have to. You have to economize as an artist. <laughs> exactly. So I said, I'll just, just splash this something on the pa paper, on a piece of paper, so it's not wasted. Then I'll work on it later. Uh, whatever I did, I don't even remember. It came out so good. Whoever I've seen, I took it to some instructor, some people, and they said, frame it and hang it. Don't touch. It's so good. But this one, uh, I did work a little bit more than that, but still, it came out very easy. The f I like the freedom, mm. the easiness of it. And then we have a this one is another piece here. Another piece. This is Tuscan Way. I made this. I did it in Tuscany when I was um, painting there. Uh, the reason I showed, I do use mixed media. I do incorporate uh, maps, writings, um, different type of charcoals, pencils, and so forth. There's a lot of others here in this one. And also the use of um, acrylic like watercolor. Mm -hmm. A lot of people thinks, think that this is watercolor, but it's not. Uh, yeah, I would have thought that it is watercolor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
That's the only reason I wanted to show it. Another Tuscan way. And the, the collage elements uh, yes. that we're seeing here that you might have had in some other pieces, but they're really, really prominent yeah, in this one. Yeah, and there are other pieces that they are even more prominent, and there are several, many in the larger pieces mm -hmm. especially. What are, some, what are some challenges that you face as a, as a working artist today? Ah, oh, challenges, yeah. Challenges have been in the past, present, and most likely into the future. Artists, a lot of challenges. Uh, I'm, I like challenges. I'm always open to challenges. But rather than talking maybe about my challenge, maybe I can, in general, artists faced one aspect, only one challenge. Um, I always wonder how come throughout history, because I guess female artists uh, face more challenge than male artists. And not only in painting, it was the same in when I was working with clay, it was the same thing. Because when you look throughout the history, if not all, most artists have been male. Right. Men. How's that? I mean, how could that be? Why is that? Uh, Mozart's sister, for instance. I mean, took so many years for us to learn how talented she was. But she was uh, never able, she's never been able to share that talent, uh, explore that talent, uh, and show it to others because she was kept behind. She wasn't given the opportunity behind uh, closed doors. Right. And that's really, um, I always wonder how come, why, uh, although, I guess I know why, but <laughs> recently a study has been made in the United States. Um, let me see if I remember that. Um, they wanted they wanted have a data on viewers' response to different paintings without giving the gender of the painter. Mm -hmm. So people look at their paintings, did not know if it was made by a male or a female artist, and their uh, reactions were exactly the same. Uniforms, dislike, uh, admiration, whatever it was, same without knowing. But in today's market, uh, paintings made by men, by a male artists, they get 42.5% higher price mm. than female artists. It's just the name. So the sexism from, from the past you know, where women weren't even exactly. uh, acknowledged as age. artists is still leeching forward uh, in terms of Absolutely. the art market and pricing and who gets paid. And exactly. That is, I guess, it's more than even a challenge. It's something so unfair. Mm. It just doesn't make sense because if you're blind, if you don't know the artist's name, you react same way, you'll probably pay the same. But once you know the name, it changes. Why? How come is that? It's, it's, it's 42.5%, that's uh, higher even than the discrepancy we have in the regular job market between male and female earnings. That's much higher than that. Mm. Anyway, that's, I guess, one challenge. Certainly. Just, this one, this piece is called, uh, that's, if not my favorite, one of my favorite, I'm keeping it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's called Mind Games, it's acrylic. Uh, a lot of, lot of color here. Mm -hmm. And a lot of things going on. Uh, it's a very unusual composition uh, that works. It's quadrants almost, mm -hmm. quadrants. And it, it represents a period in my lifetime, actually. In my life, not my lifetime. But <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a sort of tough time. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of layering, um, uh, some some handwritten elements or some scribbling there. Yeah, I, and, I do that a lot. And uh, and then you see you can kind of see your process open up as you look at the layers. Um, you know, you have you you're. I'm trying to guess at like what yeah, your yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I love that. You know, when a viewer talks about the piece, not me. <laughs> I that's real. I take such joy from that. I'm yeah, I'm trying to guess at like what the first color layers were, and I and then and then the how you how you finish up. And, and I see that you've added washes, and then you've left some areas flat, like it like we've seen in other pieces. And then there's some some shaping here of, of different shapes, and then the sense of the face and then you're, you're 
the the top layer is these these um, strokes, these kind of rough strokes that that cap everything off. You know, you very good. You <laughs> talked a lot about the technique. How about the feel? The feel, I, like the colors, definitely s uh, have have a have a feeling. I mean, it, we're coming into fall, so <laughs> I, uh, I'm, 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 I, I fall yeah. kind of on the mind right now. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, but um, so it fits in that case. Yeah, Into and and I'm, I, this also reminds me of of Munch's The Scream, uh -huh. uh, in some way. Just as I'm remembering that painting and the the bridge. Oh um, yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, I, I I get that kind of art historical reference that I'm imposing on it. Um, I don't know if that was intentional, but that's that's kind of what I'm what I'm getting out of this painting. Awesome, A plus, <laughs> Yay, A plus for right. game. <laughs> this one is called uh, Multiple Endurance. That's another, um, uh, not necessarily my uh, experience, but people, humans in general, going through different endurances, problems, and then enduring all these problems mm -hmm. in a certain way. Uh, I used, or oh, I didn't use any uh, collage material, but sometimes you can collage almost with the medium, with the paint, by layering, you c create that also. And again, using multiple, multiple colors mm -hmm. rather than, uh, sometimes I will always try to use just a very few colors, very subtle, then it just cannot, I cannot stop making it colorful again. And somebody told me, I, not somebody, a lot of people don't fight that, that's your personality. I don't have to be subtle, I guess I <laughs> cannot be. And uh, my work has always been with the clay also organic, very organic. Uh, and I don't like perfection, and there's been a lot in this piece too. Whenever uh, I always build with my hands uh, with clay, but I use the wheel to incorporate into the hand built pieces. And even if it's just a hand um, wheel thrown piece, and if it came out perfect, I would whack one side to mm. make it imperfect. I to make it more organic. I like imperfection. Again, the if spontaneity. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's. One of the reasons that a lot of, um, uh, I don't want to say imperfection, mm -hmm. but things that are not, I don't like symmetry. So I try to change those, and it's been a lot of that incorporated mm. in this piece, and it's, I guess one of the reasons I brought. So. Yeah, it's, I like the, uh, I see the architectural references that we've seen. Again, yeah, that always um, shows. And, and the, the, the scribbling, the handwriting. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, and the dramatic angles that just kind of draw your eye to certain places um, and all the techniques that we've seen and, and talked about up to now. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm going to have a show here. Yes, yes you are. Um, and we'll have information about that show at the, at the very end of, uh, of our show here. Um, and um, I want to thank you again, oh, thank Yildiz, you so for coming much. in. Can I just say my website? Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's just like my name, www.yildizgordowski.com. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. If and anybody would like to see him. And we'll have that up at the end of the program ah, as well. Great. Didn't know that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Thank mm -hmm. you.